So there's the ascension of Jesus. So just basically, we already know you've been told years and years and years. And that's not saying it's nothing short of important. Like we still need to make sure we always understand the significance of the cross, but also that he resurrected. So many people are always thinking of the tomb. They're always thinking of the death and the sacrifice. And that's awesome. But God has called us for live, to live a new life, right? Not like, oh, when I die, then I'll have a new life. No, right now. <laughs> right now is the new life. Right now, in fact, if you're in your sins and you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, like the, the, you're, you're still in your sins. It wasn't just a belief. If you think that it was just a belief, go back to the scriptures. See what, see what, 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 what did Acts, what did they say? They said that when you are baptized in the name of Jesus, right? Even other people say, well, well why shouldn't it be the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? That's what Jesus said. Well, first thing, Jesus wasn't even, he's just saying about himself. What is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Colossians says that he is the, the fullness of the Godhead, uh, of the Godhead bodily, right? Jesus Christ. So it's in the name of Jesus. It, it covers it all, right? It's, it's he, in fact, the Holy Spirit is coming in his name, which is Jesus. Like the Holy Spirit doesn't have a separate name called like Mike or whatever. Like it's, he's saying he's coming in his name. Like we have to understand how this is, how, how this is all set up. Um, and, and we get a little too caught up in necessarily the semantics of it, but the bottom line is get baptized, right? It's, it's, it's important. It's necessary. Um, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is a gift that's promised. And here's what Jesus said. What did Jesus promise? Right? He says, so when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times. Basically saying, we, we ain't even discussing that. He said, they are, are not for you to know. He says, but you will receive what power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my what witnesses. What is a witness? The Bible calls us to be disciples of all nations. This is what Jesus said. Paul said that we are ambassadors of Christ. In fact, I know this is going to cut some people up because a lot of people go, we're all, you know, I'll always hear it like everybody gets all you know kumbaya and we're all just one big planet of god's children on this earth okay let me let me just just hear me hear me we sing in kumbaya and we're hugging trees and we're just like looking to the earth and the universe and all this stuff and not acknowledging what it really is this is god's creation okay there's a creator and there's creations okay there's no like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glorifying the universe. No, I'm not. Because then you'd be subject to Romans 1.1 when they worship the creation rather than the creator. You don't want to get caught up like that, right? Um, God deserves all the praise and the glory, right? But this is what he did with hum human beings. Human beings were always meant to be his proxies, his, his extensions, right, of his will right? That all got, that whole plan got thwarted, thwarted when sin came into the world, when Adam decided to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil instead of the tree of life. And it actually, he made a decision to say, I'm going to follow my own will. And when he did that, right? And not even follow my own will. He followed his own decision. He exercised free will and said, I'm going to choose to do the opposite of what God says. When you do the opposite of what God commands, that's sin. When you don't believe and faithful to what God says, that is sin. The Bible says, and when sin is fully born, it brings forth death. The wages of sin are death. That is the penalty. That is basically saying that this is what the just payment is. God looks at sin as doesn't matter if you just, you know, it's, Say, oh, I only told one lie in my life and that's it. Well, to God, that one lie is a sin. And if you don't actually put your faith in his son, Jesus Christ, and obey what Jesus said to do, which is <laughs> repent, turn away from your sins, right? Be baptized in his name, in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. 
and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? And God empowers you to be a what? Witness. He said, when the Spirit comes upon you, right? You got to understand, these are followers. They've been providing action. They've been, they've been matching their faith, and their faith is increasing every time they're putting action into what they believe. They're putting action into what Jesus says. It's not a, you know, we're like so... I don't know, like, I don't know, brain trauma or something that when we look at the preacher or the teacher, it's almost like, oh, I hear this message and then I just go back home or I go back to watching stuff I'm not supposed to watch or I go back to drinking and doing all these other things. If you really look at the word of God, God is saying, put those things down, you know, put the things down that are causing you to sin, that are causing you. And if you don't know what they are, we can open them up, you know? But it's not about living a quote unquote, oh, I'm, I'm, the, when the Bible says that we're set free, he's saying you're set free from your sins, meaning you don't have to let it have power over you anymore. But that's when you become a full born again believer. But a lot of us are not even fully born again. We say in our minds that we are, because we accepted a prayer that a man of God or a preacher or a teacher, whoever spoke to us about 15, 20, maybe five something years ago, right? When we attended one little service once in a blue moon out of our lives. But the reality is that we're really just following ourselves and we have a belief in God and God has been throwing out life, you know, line after line after line. And he will definitely make sure that a full, full gospel is finally presented to you and you are required to respond in faith. You are required to take that action and say, hey, I know I need this. I know I need to repent. I know I need to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of my sins. I know that I need to die with Christ, be resurrected a new person, right? The Bible says that when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. But how do you get in Christ? That's the point. The Bible says that there's no condemnation that those are in Christ who do what? Do not follow the, the, they do not follow the works of their flesh. They do not follow their flesh, but they are what? Led by the spirit. You can't be led by the spirit if you don't have the Holy Spirit. You can't even fight the demons and the spirits and the things that you struggle with without actually receiving the spirit of God, without actually being set free. So some of us believe in Christianity as a system, but understand that Jesus didn't preach Christianity. That term, he didn't even say be a Christian. He said, be a disciple, be a follower, right? Do what I tell you to do, right? Have faith in what I've spoken over your life. If you love me, you will what? Keep my commandments. You will obey me, right? You wouldn't just call me your savior. You'd also look to me as Lord, right? There's Lord in front of that, but all we think is, Jesus saved me from hell. Jesus saved me from living eternity. I get to go to heaven. Yay. Wait a second. You're being taught wrong. Jesus saves us from our sins. Your sins, the penalty of your sins is death, physical and spiritual. We're so focused on what was said, but not actually what 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 actually happened this is what actually happened so he said i promise the spirit and you will be my what witnesses keyword witnesses telling people about me everywhere okay so if you look at your life and go do i tell people about jesus everywhere nah, probably not right it says in jerusalem throughout judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth well he's just talking just to the apostles the apostles did not get to the ends of the earth there are people right now, right? People right now, all throughout the planet. There's some even, I remember seeing something on National Geographic. There's some like literally a little nation out in a, on an island where they were, uh, I don't know, they killed some dude. He tried, <laughs> he tried to witness them. He tried to say something. I don't know if he was being a witness or not, but they're like near Papua New Guinea or something like that. But they're like Melanesian, the Melanesian people, whatever. They're out in somewhere, but they don't play. They, they, they don't want to be bothered with nothing. But if them people, for some reason, if, if the gospel does not get to them, I'm sure God has a way to deal with people in that part of it. The Bible says the gospel will be preached all into the world. So I believe that 
somehow we'll get to those people that don't want to be in contact with other society. But you know what God does know? God also knows where the moral law. So we have a whole nother thing because people always get into that. What if there's like one person up in a cave and he never got reached, you know, by God? It's like, okay, like, and we can go back to the Old Testament. There's a bunch of other people that didn't know God at that time. And they just believed in God. They didn't even, they were just believing in the Messiah to come, but they died and never got to see the Messiah. But well, that's a whole nother story. But we're talking about right now, like after Jesus ascended, you know, um, and what he sent, because this has already happened. Okay. Now the next part here show the full chapter the holy spirit comes on the day of pentecost right day of pentecost all the believers are meeting together in one place suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled settled on each of them and everyone pre present present sorry was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages. The Holy Spirit gave them this ability. It says, at that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by believers. All right, we can skip this part. It's just, you know, just talking about different nations or whatnot. They were amazed and perplexed, you know, and it says, other crowds ridiculed ridiculed them saying what they were just drunk that's all peter preaches the crowd peter lets them know hey this is basically what was predicted like i summarized before it's nine in the morning no one's drink no one's drinking right he says in the last days god says i will pour out my spirit upon all people your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams in those days i will pour out my spirit even on my servants men and women alike and they will prophesy, and I will cause wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds and smoke. Now he gets to even some future, future stuff. This is some stuff that's even mentioned in Revelation. It says, the sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red, before that great and glorious day the Lord arrives. So all these cosmic things are about to happen, and, um, and <laughs> honestly, I believe they're going to happen a lot sooner than we think, you know? But that's just where, where I'm at. Um, it says, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be what? Saved, right? So it says, people of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him. Okay, check this out. We're a disciple of Jesus, and we're supposed to be a witness of Jesus. We do the same thing he does. The Bible, Jesus even said we would do greater works than what he did. Now, think about that. How everyone, when we look at Christ, but then he says the body of Christ, the actual people that are born again will do greater works. It says God knew what would happen and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed with the help of lawless Gentiles. You nailed him to the cross and killed him, but God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life for death could not keep him in its grip. King David said this about him. See, I see the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your holy one to rot in the, in the grave. And you, it says, you have shown me the way of life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Dear brothers, Think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself, for he died and was buried, and his tomb is still here among us. This is the Old Testament, right? David. He says, but he was a prophet, and he knew God had promised an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave it says god raised jesus from the dead and we are all witnesses of this now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at god's right hand and fought and the father as he had promised gave him what the holy spirit okay so jesus promises the father 
right? As he had promised, it says, to pour out upon us just as you see and hear today. For David himself never ascended into heaven, yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies. And also what Jesus said, that the Holy Spirit will remind you and show you all truth. This is literally just happening, guys. Like it's happening. Like he's actually speaking to him. The Spirit of God is letting him know. It says, so let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both what? Lord and Messiah. So now is he Lord, right? So there's a kingship right there, but a king of a kingdom, right? But Messiah, right? Uh, like we said, oh, the Hebrew, what is it? Yeshua HaMashiach, right? The Messiah, the Christ. He said that um, Peter's words pierced their hearts, right? So Peter basically preached the gospel, but he preached it kind of like in a slice way, right? Like straight, straight with no chaser. He said, Peter's words pierced their hearts and said to him, and they said to him, right? To the, uh, and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? They did not say, what prayer do we need? <laughs> no one said, come, let's go through this sinner's prayer right now. Let's accept Jesus in your heart, right? Because I know when we use Romans 10, 9, I was, I, someone told me about it. I'm telling you right now that it, that is taken out of context. I'm not saying that something doesn't happen in your heart when you feel the word of God. The Bible says that when the word goes out, it will not return void, meaning in it's going to cut flesh, right? It cuts flesh, marrow, bone, and it goes straight to soul and spirit as well. So the spirit, so the word of God is, is spirit, it's life. It's going to do what it's going to do. It's, it's, it, that Bible says that the word of God is a what? Double-edged sword. So it's sharp. It's going to cut through your, hallelujah. It's going to cut through the, the what? The seen, and it's going to cut through what? The unseen, amen? It's going to cut through what, what is on the surface, and then what we can't even see, right? Like literally the part of you that God knows, like your soul, like it, it'll cut right into that too in the heart of the matter. Why? Because it because it's, it's, it's life and spirit, right? It says, Peter's word pierced their hearts, right? So there was conviction, amen? That's what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do. It's supposed to be a, oh, I feel something, right? It says, Peter replied, each of you must what? Repent of your sins and turn to God, okay? And not kind of, sort of, not, oh, you know, like I was told, oh, salvation means, you know, you, you, I mean, people plenty of times, you don't have to be, you don't, you don't have to be baptized, be saved. That's just symbol. That's just telling you that you are part of the, the membership. You know, that's just part of membership. That's just your outward expression. Where does it say that here? Is that their outward expression? Is that an outward expression? Is it just a expression? Or did it actually mean something more? When Jesus said, be born again of the water and the spirit. How does this all line up? But then it doesn't make sense when you speak to your typical average watered down preaching that's out there, right? Where Jesus is all about what he can do for you and not, not, oh, what he actually commanded us to do, right? It's a self-centered gospel. It's a gospel that is all about you and not about actually what Christ did and what he wants to do through you. That's the difference, right? When he said, I will make you witnesses amongst men, right? Like he spoke to even the disciples, I'll make you fishers of men. Like he's speaking to us even till today. That's why the Bible says that the, the harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe. God is the Lord of the harvest, but the laborers are few. It's very few people that are actually going to really do what God tells them to do. They're going to hear the word. Eh, I'll get, when I get this together, when I get that together, or only, you know, God bless me with this car. God bless me with this house. God bless me. Okay. Yeah, he probably did. I'm not saying he doesn't, but the unbeliever, the guy that believes in Buddha, the guy believes in Islam, the guy believes in, you know, Confucius, whatever, the atheists, they got cars, they got houses, they got possessions too. So then what? Who provided that for them? 
So we try to get into this, God blesses me with materialism, and then that's equivalent of I'm living for God. No, that's you basically not saying God can't bless us with things, but we need to understand that it's not all about the blessing. It's about the blesser, right? It's not about the creation. It's about the creator. And then when you start to really understand, well, what is my purpose in life? You need to know it actually really resides in Christ. It does not reside in just your autonomy, just your free will. You will believe that, and Satan will make blind you to make you to make you think that that is reality. That there is no connection, that there's no purpose, there's no like actual thing that God actually thought of you in a certain way to actually be a particular, you know, function in his body, right? Like there's actually no design. It's just, you know, you're here and it's all about glorifying and in encouraging your own culture, encouraging your own ethnicity, building up your own humanity. As if like, basically we don't need God. I mean, that's really the bottom line with the world presents every single day to us is we don't need God and we're gods ourselves. <laughs> we make ourselves gods. Really evaluate your life and see that. I'm not saying that you don't fully believe that, but you really, most of us really do serve our own interests. And we don't even know where to start, honestly, when it comes to checking in whether or not we're actually living in the faith. It says here, brothers, what should we do? It says, Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins, turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. So there was actions that were being taken right now. So people try to say, I'm not saved by my works. Okay, no, you're not saved by works like I work, like I'm the one who died on the cross. No, but God has, uh, has told you to obey what he commanded, and these are what they did to be born again. Jesus said, to believe in me means then to obey what he actually commanded, be born again, right? Turn away from sins. But that's works because I'm not, I'm not, I'm just supposed to just live however I want. And all I got to do is just believe in him and that's enough. And he, and he died on the cross and he, he forgave all my sins and that's it. There's nothing I can do to get my salvation. Actually, you know, the Bible says you work out. What's that word again? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why do you think it said that? Or did you not know that? Most of us don't even know that that scripture is in there to work out your own salvation, meaning in you are going to have to, the Bible says that we are all going to be judged, right? Now there's different judgments, but it does say that every man will be judged for every idle word he spoke or she spoke and what you did in your what body, what actions you did in your body. Wait a second. But you told me salvation is of, who told you that? Did this Bible tell you that? Did a just random person that you just trusted in the Bible and you didn't even look at the scriptures yourself say that? See, that's where we need to come to the knowledge of God and say like, okay, God, what is the preacher trying to say? What, what is your word actually saying? Now, God is equipping those and saying, this is how you become born again. Now, how you become born again, you repent of your sins, you turn to God, right? It's not just... So repentance means 180, you turn in one direction, not the other. It's no 360s, okay? If you're smoking, if you're fornicating, whatever you're doing, right, that you know that's wrong. In, in fact, you know how the Bible clearly says it? It says that if you know what the right thing to do and you do the wrong thing, that's sin. That almost covers, like, everything. That's like your mind. You have to, like, literally burn a part of your conscience and deny that if you, like, did something that you wasn't supposed to do, and then, you know, man, I wasn't supposed to do that. Okay, that's sin, right? God is saying, turn away from that and turn to me. Turn to God. Be baptized, be, be, be holy, right? Then say, be perfect, right? Because you cannot be that. Only Jesus was perfect. But you know what? God says for us to be holy, meaning separate unto us, and we will be conformed into the image of his son. That's your, that's God's purpose for those that are born again. 
it says, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, right? So that water is not just symbolic, it's actually something happening, right? Christ, right? We're believing that we're dying with Christ, rising with Christ. We know that that Jesus, that name is above every name, right? No one can literally be forgiven of sins without that name. It says, then you will what? Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, your children, and those far off, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all the listeners, save yourselves from this what? Crooked generation. I can say that, save yourself from this crooked generation. There's nothing in the world that we need to really put stock in. We are just literally transitioning from, the, from this state this reality of decay to the next phase, to the next, the eternal state, which is the eternal age. But if you're born again, you're a part of that. If you're not born again, then you die in your sins because you did, you chose not to live a faithful life in Christ. And God, God, God has no choice. God has no choice to, you know, that the penalty is, is death. And those people that are not, the whole point is to make sure your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, okay? And we'll talk about that another time. But it says, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. So what happened? They believed, just like Jesus said, what Peter said. So what they believe what Peter said, that means that they actually took action and they were what? Baptized and added to the church. So all this, I'm a member of so-and-so, Zion Baptist, blah, 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 or I'm a member of something, something, evangelical, whatever, that nah, they ain't really no, there ain't no memberships like that. In heaven is you were born again. If you're baptized, you believe, you're a part of this, you're a part of this family. You get empowered by the Holy Spirit, right? Now you have the, now you have the power to literally do the things, right? Even next level stuff that we can get into later um, that 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 comes with having the being filled with the Holy Spirit, right? It's not just all oh, people speaking tongues. Like speaking in tongues is even different. It's praying in tongues. Then there's preaching in tongues. Then there's actually speaking and interpreting tongues and having even the gift to interpret and speak other languages, right? By the utterance of the Spirit. So people just give this just one-sided thought because they don't even really understand or see the scriptures and study the scriptures, like the Bible says, study to show thyself approved um, unto God. Amen? A worker need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So a lot of people are not dividing the word of truth properly, and that's why we're in such a dilemma. But all the believers did what? They devoted themselves to apostles' teaching and fellowship, and they shared meals right? Including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. You know, the Bible also says that they went to temple. It says um, a deep sense of awe came over them. You know, they performed miraculous signs, wonders. It says the believers met together in one place. It said they met in the temple or temple courts, um, shared everything. So it wasn't just the church building, right? We are the church, those that believe. And God is saying that we can go, we can go beyond that. It says they sold their property, possession, shared the money, with those in need, they worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper. So this type of stuff here, I'm telling you right now, they, there's definitely going to be coming a time where church as was done as usual, this is not going to happen anymore. Everybody's all screaming up and down, saying my, my rights, my this, my that. Well, get ready for it. Get ready. Get ready. Because <laughs> you're going to have to adapt. You're going to have to adapt like China. You're going to have to adapt like all the other countries that are going to get, feel the heat. They're going to feel the heat of, of, um, of really, really having to live out their faith. Now it says, they worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes, shared their meals of great joy and generosity, all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship who are being saved. All right, last part here, and we'll, we'll continue next week. Um,